Hello and welcome to um, Edit Cell Biology, paper two. Okay, so I'm going to get started because uh, this is part of um, an exam series of Edit Cell. So this is the, uh, the, yep, the biology paper two. Let's get going. My total mark is 100, answer each question. Um, even if biology, you still need a calculator, I'd recommend, because you will get calculations coming up somewhere. So remember your calculator in the exam. Okay, so let's have a look at the first question. Oh, and there's sometimes there's where you have to um, put X in the box if it's a multiple choice. So let's have a look at the first. Blood is filtered in the kidney to remove unwanted substances. Figure one shows part of a nephron. Okay, so name the structures labeled P and Q. So it's just sort of remembering what they're called really here, isn't it? That's a lot of biology, it's like that. It's, like it's remembering words and things. Uh, so this one is the, uh, it's the glomerulus. This is right there. Oh, let's put my pen. I'll use a blue, dark blue. Uh, glomerulus. Spelling, this one too. And the other one is Bowman's, it's named after somebody. Bowman's capsule. So I, I um, remember doing a lot of <laughs> kidney biology when I went to school as well. So it's uh, stayed in the curriculum because kidney is obviously important. But the heart, isn't it? Obviously, all going to stay the same over time. Okay, let's go to the next bit. Figure two shows all oh, the maths. I thought we would um, yep, crop up. Figure two shows information about some of the components in the blood and in the filtrate in this part of the nephron. Okay, so we've got um, components, glucose, protein, red blood cells, white blood cells, concentration, so this is milligram, and that's gram. So there's differences in um, units there, and some are um, per centimeter cubed, that was per dm cubed. There's different units going on, so you've got to be careful about there. The concentrate in the filtrate of the nephron, that's in the blood and that's in the nephron. Okay, so we all zero apart from glucose. Calculate the difference in the number of red blood cells and the number of white blood cells in one centimeter cubed of blood so we're just talking about these okay so not anything, anything else at the moment okay so we've got that's the there's more red blood cells than white so it looks like that but look at that power on that okay so let's do um it's um a nice simple so 4.5 just copy the number of red blood cells times 10 to the power of six so that's a million okay minus the white blood cells, eight times 10 to the power of three. Um, they're both per centimeter cubed, so we don't have to, um, you know, we don't have to write that. Okay, so, um, okay, I think it's number of, number of white blood cells, give you your answer. I'll give you your answer in standard, I was thinking what the other mark was there. Um, okay, so we can do that on our, on our calculator, so let's just put that in to our calculators. So we've got 4.5 times 10 to the minus 6. Okay, minus 8xb3. We get four four nine two zero zero zero. Okay, so let's, let's think about how to write that. You see a standard form. So I'm thinking about why there's only one mark for that, but it's not. It's, there's two marks. So four. I'm writing down exactly what I got on the calculator. So I'm using the Casio uh, calculator, the same ones that you have at school, um, and I recommend you to buy. It. It's Casio FX eighty three. Okay, and you have to remember how to use your calculator. So when we get in biology, we need to know how to use a calculator. Okay, so otherwise you get to the exam and some people don't know how to use it. I've had that before I talk to students and I took on a class, I didn't teach them 
oh yeah, but I took them to an exam hall and some of them didn't know. And obviously at that point, nobody can really help you with an exam, can they? Okay, so I'm going to write that in standard form now. Okay, so remember about standard form, we're going to put the dot uh, decimal point there. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so 4.5, um, because that's a two, to one decimal place there, I'm copying that, times 10 to the power of six. Okay. Okay, it's just a number, so it doesn't have a unit. Okay, it's just a number. Again, I'm looking for a unit there. That would have probably been three marks if there was something with units. So always look what I'm doing. I'm looking at the marks, see what you might need to do and to look back if you think, hmm, there's, there's something I haven't done there. Okay, so it was about a standard form, which was the second mark. Okay, but you do get one mark just for writing that. Okay, so if you forgot, there's still one mark to be had out too. So part two, explain why there are differences in the concentrations of some components in the blood and some components in this part of the nephron. It's a long sentence, isn't it? I need a, a comma in there somewhere, I think, to read that out. Um, Okay, so what's the differences? So that's a some component in the blood and part of the nephron. Okay, so the, the glucose is the same. The protein, the red blood cells, and the white blood cells are different. Okay, so let's have a, let's think about that then. Okay, so let's, let's talk about the red blood cells. So the red and red and white blood cells, of course they're in the blood, aren't they? That's what is where they go there. The blood cells are, are not present. So even in the filtrate, okay, this is observation not present there, not present in the filtrate. Okay, uh, because they are too large, remember they're cells, Okay, because they've got a size to them. I mean, they're small fed to human, but they've got a size in the blood, haven't they? They're, they're sizable in the blood. Because they are too large or too big, too large, so T, too large to pass through the membrane into the nephron. Okay, because they're too large to go through. You can see that um, the, the glucose goes through. Um, yeah, you could, you could do the converse argument there. I mean, to me, the obvious thing is to see the different, but you could say that glucose is found in the filtrate because it's small, it's a molecule, it's not a cell. Okay, is uh, you could also say something about the protein as well. Um, um, I'll put that in just for a bit of clarity and proteins. Protein is quite long molecules. Protein, just a clarity there. I'm not present the filtrate because they're too large to pass um, membrane. So yeah, you can say the converse. You can say glucose is small enough to pass through. It's a molecule. It's a smaller molecule. Okay. So state the name of the hormone that regulates the water content of the blood. Antidiuretic hormone. So ADH. Anti uh, diuretic. Yeah. Also, don't worry too much about the spelling of this. Um, as long as the person understands it, and they can read it as diuretic. Um, I've got a mark scheme um, next to me to tell me what's acceptable. Uh, it does say it does say that um, phonetic spellings of anti diuretic are also acceptable. So that means as long as the person knows what you're talking about they can sort of spread it out okay it doesn't matter it doesn't matter too much but okay diuretic right i like, I like red blood cells that i like cell, um, cell. that thing to do cells isn't quite interesting so figure three shows a diagram of a red blood cell ooh, from a turtle okay and a diagram of a red blood cell from a human 
Okay, that's interesting. These cells are animal cells. Animal cells do not have, okay, so they're talking about, well, straight away, they don't have a cell wall, that's plants. Okay, I mean plants have cell walls. So the actual length of the red blood cell from the turtle is 20.5 micrometers. Okay. That mu is micrometers. Calculate the length of the magnified image of the red blood cell of the turtle when magnified 400 times. So the magnified image, okay. So we're gonna magnify it well for it. So it's nice and easy, isn't it actually? It's just gonna times it. But remember it's the units here, I think they might catch people out. So micrometers times 400, okay. And all we have to do is multiply that. So 8,200 micrometers. That's the image. Okay, that's the image. Okay, the width of the human blood, uh, red blood cell, the human one, when magnified is 3.08 millimeters. Calculate the actual width of the cell and show your answer in standard form. Hmm, they do like standard form a lot in this one. So it's not really a scientific calculator because you're right to the scientific calculator. Okay, you obviously allowed it, but remember how to use it. Okay, so practice doing that even for biology. Okay, so we're going to go back the other way, aren't we? So 3.08 okay so yeah think of the units here okay divided by 400 we'll talk about that in a minute it calls 0 0.0077 okay and that um because that was millimeters okay oh okay it wants it in millim okay it wants it in millimeters okay so in standard form. So that's fine. That's fine um, at the moment. But then we need to put it in standard form. So yeah, that was the other mark there again. So how many decimal points? So, so how many places is the decimal point going to move? So we go one, two, three. Okay, 7.7 .7 times 10 to the minus three millimeters. Okay, so we're going back the other way. Okay, let's have a look. Red blood cells are carried in veins and arteries. Figure four shows the equipment used to measure the elasticity of an artery. Hmm. Clamp stand, book, meter rule, the back, 10 gram, 10 gram masses, mass carrier, that's with Ring of tissue from artery. Okay, so they've cut an artery, I guess some an animal. <laughs> um, they've kicked it up here. Okay, so describe a method you could use to show, so describe a method you could use to see how much the ring of tissue from an artery could stretch before it is no longer returned to its original size. Okay, so really this is an experimental method. It's not really knowing about the artery itself, other than the stretchy, it's knowing how to do, um, to do experiments. So number one, we need to, it's a bit like spring constant. Okay, so you measure the length of the tissue. So you measure the artery tissue, so the original length, what you would do with the spring. Okay. So to get original length. Okay, number two, you add masses. Okay, add masses. Uh, then, then remove and measure artery tissue again. I'm gonna make myself a bit of room here. Artery tissue again. T 
to see if original length is restored. So it goes back to it. Okay, so repeat. Repeat until the tissue no longer returns to its original length. It's a, it's a bit like a fine elastic limit of spring, isn't it? It's exactly the same, really. Okay, original length. Okay, that's our three things, three marks. So yeah, it's just an experimental method. You don't need to retalk really about anything to do with the actual biology of that. It's, more, it's, it's kind of physics-y, that question. But give one safety precaution, just the one, you need to take when handling animal tissue, such as blood vessels. Uh, what we do, I would say wash hands. I mean, it's the same as, as handling meat, isn't it? So if you had raw meat, it's raw meat, um, and you're going to cook it, you'd wash your hands, wouldn't you, afterwards? So wash hands after handling. You could put wear gloves. Okay, you could do that. Like, say, for example, like, you think about more meat, and if you're a butch, you're probably wearing gloves and things. Okay, it's just to, um, you only have to put one mark there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video there, and I'll carry on in part two. So thank you, and I'll see you in part two.